Good morning, dear friends. And praise the Lord and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are facing another day, a new day. And what is ahead of us, we don't know, but the Lord knows and He is with us. He will lead us step by step. So don't be afraid or anxious. Trust the Lord. Let us meditate on God's word. And uh, I would like to continue from this passage that we have been looking at. The two miracles, creative miracles of Jesus. And what I want to meditate with you today is the crowd reactions and their eagerness to see Jesus again. Which is recorded in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6. Now chapter 6 from verse 22 it says, The next day, and that is after feeding the multitude with the five loaves and two fishes, the next day the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had left there, had been there, and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Now once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, uh, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Now today's meditation has a title which says, Which crowd you belong to? Crowd came to Jesus. And why did they come? Nobody had to tell Jesus the reason. He knew their thoughts and what was in their mind. From the passage we have read, it is very clear that they came to get. They came to use him. That was the problem. Is it not the reason People come even today. They come to get or put it to, to bluntly put it to use Jesus Christ for their benefit, for their selfish purposes. What a difference would it have made if some among the crowd had come to give and not to get. It is necessary to come to Jesus to get as well because there are certain things only He can give and unless He gives we cannot have them. For example salvation, the forgiveness of sin, eternal life, peace that abides and happiness and these are promises of God and only He can give us these blessings and satisfy us. So we need to come to Jesus for certain things definitely. But here the problem was they did not come to give but they came to get. But uh, but is it not a shame to take everything and to give nothing? That's a shame. 
and, and so I like to meditate with you and I would like to mention four things um, with you. Things we can learn from the crowd which was searching for him and trying to find. Number one, there are those who simply make use of their home. They stay comfortably, eat, sleep, and without making any contribution for the common good of every member of the family. Now remember, my friends, home is a place which need everyone's contribution to make life easier and also enjoyable. Everyone's participation is needed to make home a happy place to live. And let us not forget, you cannot do home, we cannot make a home with bricks and iron and cement, etc. You can make a house. But a home is, is people. People make that home. Husband, wife, children, brothers and sisters. It is a beautiful institution that God created for man to enjoy. It is a place of learning and learning together. It is a place uh, of leaning as all of us need someone to lean on at the time of weakness, at the time of sorrow. And the home members provide that, that wonderful blessing. And uh, it is a place we all share our happiness and joy and sorrow and we share our defeat and we all together celebrate the victories that we enjoy. If one member of the home uh, uh, has won some victory, maybe over his examination or finding a a job or a getting a promotion. There are so many times when we can celebrate and uh, that we celebrate it all together. One member's victory is, is the victory for all of the members of the home. And uh, it, that, that makes life so exciting and enjoyable, my friends. And the second thing I want to remind you is this. There are those who simply make use of the friend, their friends. Just like some people use their home uh, for their selfish purposes, They're without making any contributions. And there are uh, others who simply make use of their friends. And they never seek friends unless there is some need. My friend, friendship is not just to be to 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 seek uh, uh, only when we are in need or when we are in trouble. That is not the but the main purpose of friendship is we are social being human humankind humanity is uh, are uh, consisted of uh, uh, people. And uh, we are a social being. We need each other. We need one another to enjoy times together in fellowship and uh, sharing stories and uh, encouraging one another. Not just to seek friends only at times of need. That is not real friend. And let us remember that. And the third thing I want to share with you is, thirdly, there are those who simply make use of the church as well. You know, why do they uh, uh, come to church? Why do they keep their connection with the church? Not to make any contributions, not to give, but to get. To be baptized and then to be married and um, get their children married and uh, 
uh, and to bury their dead. And these are the facilities that the church provides. And such people are seldom there to help the church or to make contributions to the missionary activities of the church and thus fulfilling the great command of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me ask all of you who are listening, do you make your contributions to the missionary activities of the, your church? Or does your church have a missionary activities? If not, my friends, it is your responsibility also to, to, to encourage the pastor, encourage others uh, in, in the membership to start a mission program because that is the great command the Lord has left with the church. That is the only thing that he has asked the church to do, reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, you know, the church uh, exists for three things. And all three show the church is there to give. Not simply get. First of all, worship. That is the one great purpose of the existence of the church in this world. And worship. In worship, to whom do we give? We give to God. Ourselves. And our praises. And secondly, it's, the church exists to build one another in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that also is an occasion to give. Give to whom? Give it to others, your brothers and sisters in the Lord, to strengthen them, to encourage them, to support them and to teach them. Those who are weak, let them be strong because of our association with such people. And the third thing is evangelization. To evangelize the world. That is another reason why the church exists in this world. And uh, that also is an opportunity to give. Give to whom? We are giving to the world. What are we to give? Jesus Christ, the Savior. The one and only Savior through whom people can be forgiven and be saved and thus receive eternal life. And the, my friends, these are the threefold uh, responsibilities of the church, the members of the church. The church exists to worship, to spread the worship of God. And the church exists to build one another. And the church exists to evangelize the world. All these three is an opportunity for us to give. Give to God and give to one another and give it to the world. And the fourth thing is, uh, some simply make use of God. And who is God to them? God to them is a God of conveniences. Uh, they seek him only if he is needed. And if we think he is not needed uh, in my life or in this case, we don't seek him. We think that we can do it all by ourselves. But then there are times when we know that nothing can save us, nothing can help us in that situation. Only God can. And so at that time we see God simply to make use of him. And they seek him only if he is needed, as I said. And, uh, and uh, their prayers are only needs and uh, requests or even demands. That's the, the, their prayers are filled with these things. They're, they're asking, they, they, they want to get. And in good hotels, uh, an example is this, uh, in good hotels, uh, there is a boy called uh, Bellhop. You know what he does? The guest rings the bell and the boy appears immediately, ready to hear their request and uh, hear their demands and uh, go immediately and get what they want. Some people think God is a sort of universal uh, bellhop. You just call and suddenly he comes, ready to serve you, ready to give you. 
or fetch out whatever you need. That's what we think God is. And let me tell you this, my friend. God does not exist for our conveniences. Please take note of that one sentence. Now the question, I like to close this with this question. Now the passage we read from the 6th chapter of John, uh, verse 60 says, On hearing it, you know, Jesus was telling them about how to get eternal life. What is the real thing they should seek after? And he told them about what he truly is, the living bread. And on hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And um, verse 66 says, From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Because he is not very convenient. And uh, whatever Jesus said what meant that they need to give up everything and follow Jesus and acknowledge him as Lord and Master. Now I want to ask you this. Crowd comes. Now which crowd do you belong to? Do you belong to the leaving crowd? Or like the disciples, clinging crowd. The clinging crowd may be a small one. But that is the crowd at the end going to receive eternal life and eternal reward. Meditate on this meditation that you heard today. And think seriously. What is it that we can give to God in the first place? Worship. And to others, encouraging one another. Build up one another. Give to others. And give to the world the gospel message by which men and women can find eternal life. Amen. I pray that you will seriously consider this and decide which crowd you want to be with. I pray that grace will be given to you and the Holy Spirit will guide you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is a great day. Enjoy this day. Amen.